Okay. So let me give an introduction to Lotana today, guys. Good morning, guys. You able to hear me, everyone? Yes, sir. Excuse me. All right. So let me give an introduction to Lotana today, guys. Okay. So as we discussed before, so in the performance testing fundamentals, when we are discussing performance testing fundamentals, uh, there are a lot of performance testing tools in the market. So however, there are three popular tools. One is load runner, then JMeter, and then Neolog, right? So in the order of their market share, market share means in the order of, you know, how much percentage they are being used in different organizations. What it is? So load runner and JMeter market share is almost equal. Okay. And the, then after, you know, Neolog comes in the third place. Okay. Any other new join is this? I saw some, some more. In. Okay. Okay. Now, so, you know, now let us, let us understand or let us, uh, uh, let me give an introduction about Lodan. So Lodan are, you know, previously, if you remember, or if you heard this name, previously it was called as Microfocus Lodan, isn't it? Before that, it was called as HP Loadrunner. Before that, it was called as HP Loadrunner. Initially, it was called as Mercury Loadrunner. The reason being, Loadrunner is a performance testing tool which was pioneered by Mercury in 1999. So Loadrunner was first pioneered by Mercury in 1999. That means Loadrunner was actually developed by a company called Mercury in 1999. So it's 25 years old tool. Most probably this year they would be celebrating their silver jubilee, right? And Lodner was later acquired by HP Enterprise in 2016, 2006. It was acquired by HP. And at that time it was called as HP Lodner. And then, you know, in 2016, Lodner was acquired by Microfocus. And 2023, Microfocus was acquired by OpenText. So right now we should call that as, you know, OpenText Lodner. That's why we should call this as OpenText Lodner. And it supports various development tools, technologies, and communication protocols. Loadrunner supports various development tools, technologies, and communication protocols. And you know what is meant by protocol? What is a protocol, Chandu? What is a protocol? Right. Communication. Communication language between client and the server. Right. So Loadrunner supports most, almost all protocols. Okay. It supports almost 34 protocols. Loadrunner supports 34 protocols. Whereas, you know, when you compare it with the competitor, JMeter supports like 15 protocols. Okay. And it Loadrunner supports, you know, even... Huh? Huh? Okay. So Loadrunner supports, you know, even uh, Loadrunner supports from legacy mainframe applications to rich internet applications. It supports, you know, legacy applications like my mainframes till latest applications, rich internet applications, uh, like, you know, uh, which follows this web dot web 2.0 technologies, ERP and CRM applications. It supports SAP GUI application and Siebel CRM application. It supports almost every protocol. In fact, this is the only tool in the market which supports such large number of protocols to conduct performance testing. And it allows users to test robust internet applications, web 2.0 technologies, ERP, CRM applications, and legacy applications like mainframes. Okay. And it is not only Pioneer tool. What is meant by Pioneer case, by the way? Leader. Leader are the first one in the field, right? Pioneer means leader in their field or the first one in the field. Isn't it? So it, it is not only a pioneer tool, right? See, what is the meaning of pioneer? A person who is among the first to explore, first or first to explore, basically, right? Or develop or first to use or apply, right? So this is not only pioneer tool, but also like it is still a market leader in the performance system paradigm. And uh, maybe this number has increased, uh, decreased slightly. Uh, this number, you know, I got this number like somewhere around uh, two in somewhere around 2022. So maybe it has, it might have come down to 40% now. Okay. Because, you know, JMeter and Neoload is becoming popular now from the past two, three years. Neoload is gaining some market share, isn't it? 
and JMIT is also JMIT also supporting newer protocols, new protocols. For instance, you know JMIT started supporting Citrix protocol uh, two years back. So of course it is not so wonderful tool for testing uh, desktop applications, JMIT. However, you know Lodomer supports you know all, uh, most of the protocols, and it is the most robust tool. We will discuss why why it is why you know why can we consider it as a robust tool. And Lodomer supports rich internet applications, Web 2.0. That means HTTP, HTML, Ajax, Flex, and Server Lite applications. These are the different applications that are supported by Lodener. SAP, Oracle applications, Microsoft SQL Server, Citrix, RT, Mail, and all of, and above all Windows socket. These are the different protocols supported by Lodener. And here you have a picture which I got it from internet. These are the sub, these are the major protocols supported by Lodener. And let me show you the complete list of protocols supported by Lodener. Okay. Anyways, let's continue. So these are the Lodener features: interactive user transaction simulation, interactive user transaction simulation supports wide range of apps. Right? It not only supports web applications; it supports desktop applications and mobile applications as well. Okay. Now let me show you what all protocols are supported by Lodener. So this is Lodener VUGen component. And now, if you see, like, you know, uh, let me go show all the protocols supported. So, if you observe here, you know, you see here, these are the different protocols supported by Lodener. You see here the title as protocol. You, it supports .NET protocols, CV user, Citrix ICA, DevWeb, DNS, FTP, IMAP, etc., etc. And this is the whole list of protocols supported by Lodener. There are around 34 protocols over here. And not only that, it supports mobile protocols, Internet of Things, right? SAP mobile platform. Uh, group client uh, mobile web etc etc native mobile apps right means you know you can do performance testing for mobile applications as well clear guys so these are the different protocols and that is why Lodener is still the market leader no other tool supports these many number of protocols clear guys yes it simulates the transactions user transactions it simulates the user transactions right We'll see that once we start scripting, you'll understand that. Once we. Uh, that is what user transactions will be simulated. Means with the help of the scripts, we do what actual users does. We simulate the real world user transactions on the application. Right. And it supports cloud testing, supports continuous testing, and it's, it also supports root cause analysis. That means if you have any performance issues, so we can, you know, like we can do root cause analysis of the, of the performance issues as well. So these are the important load and the features I, and I already covered this slide. Any queries guys before I move to the next one? Yes, you know, you'll get a clear understanding of all of these, like most of these, at least most of these, once we start scripting, what is this user transaction simulation and what is this, you know, continuous testing, root cause analytics. And a wide range of apps, of course, you know, like I am going to cover web applications and uh, ABI testing as part of this training. So once we start scripting, you will get enough, you know, slowly you will get a clarity on this. And I already covered this uh, load runner, uh, load testing architecture. Again, you know, once we complete scripting and before going text executions, I will revisit this one. I will explain this slide once again. Once we complete scripting and before starting the, starting the test executions. So that is the right time to revisit this, that slide. Okay. So let me show you that we have a separate slide decks for the scripting part as well as test executions. So this is a separate slide deck for test executions and, uh, you know, on using controller. Again, we will, re you know, we will revisit this uh, slide later on this. Okay. And I already explained at a high level in the previous sessions. Okay, and now this I covered yesterday. What are the hardware requirements and what are the software requirements for installing Lodener? So basically, this speaks about how you know how what is the required system configuration if you want to use Lodener too, right? On Windows operating system, this is for Windows operating system. There is these are the software requirements we discussed yesterday. Lodener, you know, see Windows. If any, is anyone have Windows eight by the way? Windows eight operating system. If anyone is having Windows 8 operating system, you can use 2021 basically. 
okay load in 2021 supports windows 8 but i think from 2022 onwards it supports only windows 10 okay anyways i don't think anyone is using windows 8 isn't it i don't think anyone will be having windows 8 anyone is having windows 8 guys windows 8 operating system no no sir okay yes. so even though if someone is having nothing to worry so you can use older version of load runner there will not be much differences from one from you know previous version to other version except some ui changes and you know from training perspective that will not make much difference at least from 2021 to 2022 clear guys and now these are the different components of load runner load runner professional components right load runner professional components and lr enterprise lr enterprise is also called as performance center performance center you know previously load runner used to provide trial version for this performance center but nowadays from i think from 2022 onwards they are not providing trial version for performance center they are not providing trial version okay so you know i will cover scripting and executions executions with controller we will be doing we will be using load runner controller component now what are these components when we install load runner right we get three components on your desktop observe here so you get this you get to see these three components you know on your desktop there will be few more components but you know these are the important components of load runner okay i am on the you see on the top right side on the sorry on the top left side you see controller and virtual user generator and on the bottom left you see analysis component with the same similar kind of logo with color difference isn't it so these three are load runner components important components okay you may, you may ask me like if these are important components then what are the other components how can we see the other components click on your windows icon and scroll down and go for micro focus scroll down and you know look for micro focus okay and if you expand that you see a folder called micro focus right when you expand that you see these are the these are all the components installed when you install load runner these many components get installed around 15 to 20 components get installed around 15 to 20 components get installed and the file size the file size itself will be one and a half gb the installer file size will be one and a half gb okay however these are the important components of load runner and now the first component first important component that we will be using is vision virtual user generator okay virtual user generator okay and now this is the first component you know when we install load runner this is the first component that we get and this is for script for developing the scripts are recording and developing the scripts we use used for recording the end user business processes and generates an automated performance testing script known as v user script it records the end user business processes okay and we already discussed what is a business process isn't it and it creates an automated performance testing script known as v user script clear guys we already discussed what is meant by a business process, isn't it? Yes or no, guys? We already discussed what is meant by business process. As we have some new participants, let me quickly repeat. So business process means nothing but, suppose if you take an ad banking application. Anusha, this is for you and uh, there are a few other joiners, Nikhila and uh, Venkat uh, and Sandeep. Okay. So I'm repeating this for your sake. Okay. So suppose if you take an ad banking application, these are the critical business flows of an ad banking application, right? If you want to use an ad banking application, we first create an account and log in and check balance. We add a beneficiary. If you want to do fund transfer, we add a beneficiary, isn't it? And we do fund transfer, bank statement. Sometimes, you know, once in a while, we may need to download the statement, right? Account statement or bank statement and credit card payment, fixed deposits, support ticket, if you have some issue, we raise a support ticket, a service ticket, profile update, maybe other update. When I say profile update, it can be address update or phone up, phone number update or email ID update or other update, isn't it? So all these comes under profile update. These are the critical business flows, right, of the application. These are the important business flows of the application, right, for a net banking application. Or if you take a travel application, so we create an account, log in and check ticket availability. 
right? These are the critical business first, booking a ticket, canceling a ticket, PNR inquiry, tracking, hotel room booking, tour package, pilgrim package, tour or pilgrim package, isn't it? So these are the critical business flows. Now what we do is when, if you want to do performance testing, we develop, we develop one script for each one of these. We develop one script for each one of these critical business flow and we run those scripts with the target user load. We execute those scripts or replay the scripts with the target user load. Clear guys? That is how we simulate the real user transactions. Understood? So that is how we simulate the real world user transactions. Right? Let me clear these annotations. So we record the end user business process and do we need to write any code? Again, you know, a lot of people have this query, right? So how do we need to write coding? Perform Does performance testing require coding knowledge or programming knowledge? What are the prerequisites for doing performance testing? We have a lot of these queries, right? So we actually record the script. We will not write any code from scratch. Script will be recorded by the tool. So that is the beauty of performance testing. Of course, we need to enhance the script. We need to do some script uh, script modifications, right? And that is why companies are paying like, you know, 10 lakhs package for three years experience or, you know, 15 lakhs package for three years experience, right? So scripting and executions will be your main roles and responsibilities for you know up to three years of experience. Scripting and text executions. Doing scripting and text executions will be your main roles and responsibilities. Clear this? And now we'll see in tomorrow's session, we'll see how to record a script. Okay. So today, you know, as we started already late, I may not be able to show you the scripting. So we'll complete the introduction part and what are the, you know, we need to do some settings on the load on the side right before recording a script so we'll try to i'll try to finish that now tomorrow we'll start our first script okay now the second component is controller component controller component you know is used to organize drive manage and monitor the load test this controller component is required only for test executions if you want to do any test executions then only this controller component is required this component we are talking about this component clear Okay, by the way, I'm using Loadana 2022 because, you know, Loadana 2023 is having some UI issues. Trial version is having UI issues. Clear this? The trial version or community edition is having some UI issues or some, you know, functionality issues. That's why, I you know, I'm using Loadana 2022. Once those issues are fixed, right, we will, uh, you know, like if we get a fix for that, then we'll start using 2023. Clear guys. I'm trying as I told you, I am trying to get another laptop. So I'll try that 2023 on that. And if the issue is resolved, you know, in the next one month, I'll show you that as well. But uh, UI looks almost same. There will not be much difference between 2022 and 2023. Clear. Now, so and there is another component called analysis component, which will be used for test result analysis to analyze the test results, right? We use this analysis component, okay, uh, right? These three are the important components that you see shortcut on your desktop when you install Loadrunner, isn't it? Apart from this, there are few more components called load generator. Now, what is a load generator? I think I already explained yesterday, right? Load generators are the computers that run the scripts to generate load on the application under test, as simple as that. Load generator, the name itself implies, right? Then the name itself tells that that is the machine from which we generate the load. And how do we generate the load? We run the scripts, we replay the scripts and generate the load. Generate the load on the application. Okay. And next, you know, there is another, so there is something called performance center also, uh, which I will kind of cover, you know, only theoretical part. Okay. In the training, because, you know, we are not having the style version for this. If possible, I'll try to show you if any one of our batch students are using Performance Center and if they agree for them. Okay, they need to agree to share the screen. Okay, however, uh, it's, you know, even though you don't know Performance Center, that is not at all an issue because Performance Center is very costly and only very few companies use it. 
performance and see load runner itself license load runner license itself is very costly of all the performance testing tools again performance center license is very costly than load runner okay so only large scale enterprises like banking applications or you know uh, you know large scale applications like amazon or flipkart they can afford the license cost of performance center Hey, sorry guys, I got disconnected for a moment. Able to see my screen, guys? Okay, sorry, stop my screen. Yeah. Able to see my screen now? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So got it, guys. So performance center is most like a costliest tool, and only enterprise, large scale enterprise clients can use that, like Amazon or Flipkart or you know those kind of clients only Facebook or. Uh, Twitter or uh, these kind of clients only can use that. So that is not at all an issue. Even though you don't have any experience on performance center, if you are strong in controller, you know, the UI looks almost same. The controller uh, user interface, performance center user interface almost looks the same. Okay. And now, so what is DEP? We'll discuss that later on. So important load runner terminology. I want to cover some important load runner terminology before starting the scripting. So the first one is a transaction we discussed yesterday, right? What is a transaction? Any user action where some request goes to the server is called as a transaction. Any user action is called as a transaction, which involves sending some request to the server. Isn't it? Suppose you type Amazon.in. This is one transaction on Amazon application, right? This is a transaction from testing perspective. This is one transaction on Amazon application. Or suppose, you know, you go to Amazon pay, this is one transaction, right? Because, you know, it involves sending some request to the server, isn't it? How do we know that, you know, it involves sending some request to the server? See, some requests are going to the server, isn't it? When you click on, click on any page, you know, when some requests are going to the server, right? Isn't it, guys? So these are all called as transactions. For example, login, navigate to search dialog. Enter a search string, click the search button, and log out. These are all called as transactions. And what is the purpose of transactions, guys? Transactions are used to measure performance of our application. Transactions are used to measure the performance of our application. We'll see that. How do we measure the performance? We'll see that in the first script. When I cover the first script, you'll understand that. Again, business process means a sequence of steps in your application that represents a use case or a business function, right? Business process or business scenario, critical business scenario or business flow. Okay. Let me write it down in your class notes. Business scenario or business transaction, business process, all these are one and the same. Business flow or business transaction, or business, sorry, business process. Right? All these are one and the same. Now, what is a business process, guys? A sequence of steps in your application that represents a use case or a business function. Okay? It includes one or more transactions. For example, searching a product catalog, booking a flight ticket, placing an order. These are all examples of business process. Placing an order on Amazon or booking a flight ticket on a travel application, right? Or searching a product catalog. These are all business process. Okay. And what is a scenario? Is it clear, guys, what is done by business process? Right? And so, now, sir. Yes, please. Sir, Jay Sri here. So, the business process is nothing but it has the business flows. Correct. Okay. All right. And next, scenario means nothing but a collection of business process. Group of business process is called as a scenario. Okay. In load runner technology, group of business process is called as a scenario. And a scenario defines the events that occur during a testing session based on the performance requirements. For example, a scenario might include a combination of create new account or registration, user registration, search for flight, purchase ticket business process. Okay. 
right see what is the scenario you know if we translate to this see suppose if you are testing the amazon application with all these business flows that is called as a scenario combination of this scripts or combination of business process is called as a scenario okay in jmeter it is called as test plan loadener it is called as scenario okay and now we use our script next one is we use a script where we user stands for virtual user right so we user user means nothing but virtual user So what is virtual user here? A user, you know, we simulate re real world user transactions with the help of the scripts. See, if you want to do performance testing, you will not engage, you know, suppose if you want to do performance testing with, uh, you know, let's say 1000 users or 10,000 users, we will not uh, engage 10,000 users and we cannot engage 10,000 machines, isn't it? Isn't it? Suppose if you want to do performance testing for any application, web application or a desktop application with 10,000 users, it's highly impossible to engage 10,000 testers and 10,000 machines, isn't it? Right? So that is why we develop the scripts and we simulate the scripts uh, to, we run the scripts to simulate the virtual users. Sorry, to simulate the real world user actions. To simulate real world user actions, right? And uh, these, that's why those are called as virtual users. They are not real users, but they are virtual users. The recorded actions of a business process performed in your application. For example, if you are doing user registration, you go to home page, click on registration button, submit the registration form, log in and log out, isn't it? So this will be done by, a, you know, these are the recorded business process. That is what it means. Recorded actions of a business process performed by an application. All together, they make, they make a V user script. V user script. And what is virtual user? Virtual users are V users. They simulate the actions of human, human users using your application and under test. And a scenario can contain tens, hundreds, or even thousands of virtual users. Thousands or lakhs of virtual users also. In fact, Loadrunner supports you know, millions of users. We can do performance testing with 50 lakh users with Loadrunner. Loadrunner is the most robust tool that it supports 50 lakh users. We can do performance testing with 50 lakh users. Okay. 50, 50 zero. Okay. And uh, next concept is script footprint. We'll discuss this later. Once we go to executions, we'll discuss this. Uh, as we have some non-computers background guys and new join so I don't want to repeat this. Anyways, you know, we'll discuss this once we go to the test executions, we'll understand that. Okay. Sir, sir this is uh, Satish. One small doubt, sir. Yes, yeah, Satish. Yeah, you said 50 lakh users will support to the load runner, but system should support, right? Uh, our system should support, right? Correct. Good question. We will not use one single machine. Based on, uh, hmm. so based on our RAM utilization and memory utilization, we will increase the mission according to that the tool will support 50 lakh users. Correct. That's what you're trying to convey. Correct. Correct. Okay. Actually, you know, if you want to support 50 lakh users, like, uh, you know, it will be cloud-based testing, right. basically. We will be using machines in the cloud. Okay. Okay. And so it is know, called a distributed load testing. Not support, you know, a single machine hardly supports 1,000 1, to 2,000 users or normal machines. Right? Normal machines in the sense, yeah. like, which are having 60 yes. GB or 32 GB RAM. They support, you know, hardly 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000 or max 5,000 users based on the configuration, right? We need to use multiple machines. Yes. If you want to do, you know, uh, performance testing with lakhs of users, obviously we need to use multiple machines. And those machines are called okay. load generators, okay? And you see here, you know, the, the machines that are used to run the scripts, run the script to generate load on the application, those are called as load generator machines. Clear guys. Okay. And then it is called so a distributed load testing. Yes. yes. You, we will use multiple load testing. Then it is called distributed as, load testing. As shown in this picture. If you see here, you know, this is called as controller machine. And these are called as load generator machines. Mm. And they, they create or, you know, they create the virtual users to generate load on the system. Okay. Right. Suppose if you assume that your application is running on this, you know, let me go to slideshow mode.
so observe here suppose a c observe here you know if you assume that this is your application under test so this is our assume that this is our application under test right first machine user assume mm -hmm. this is your web server the second box is app server in this highlighted part the third box is db that is the database symbol right database logo a database symbol isn't it so you know like uh, and this is called as controller machine you can see here it was mentioned here clearly like you know along with the description so this is called as controller machine and these are load generator machines we will be actually running our scripts from the load generator machines and these load generator machines generate virtual users they are not re real users that's why they are shown in blue color okay and they generate the load on the application they will simulate the real world user transactions and generate the load on the application under test application under test means the application that we have to do performance testing that is called as application under test okay and observe here we here we are you know only three machines are uh, uh, represented here or three machines are shown here however you know real world scenario you can use n number of machines as per your requirement we will be using n number of machines as per our requirement on what about jmeter maximum how many user it will support JMeter can comfortably support 5,000 to 10,000 users. That's it. Anything above 10,000, uh, you know, we'll have memory issues, out of memory issues, lot of other issues. So we need to increase the heap size of JMeter. And uh, still, you know, if you want to use more than, you know, 10,000 or 20,000, suppose if you want to execute load test with 50,000 or 1 lakh users, with JMeter, it's not possible. 50,000 users or 1 lakh users, you know, it's not possible. So that is why BlazeMeter has come into picture. Okay. When I say BlazeMeter, uh, many people like uh, get confused that, you know, uh, that I'm talking about, you know, that uh, we have a, a BlazeMeter plugin for Chrome browser. I'm not talking about that. When I say BlazeMeter, so BlazeMeter is a, you know, let me show you that. Okay. We have three demo sessions on BlazeMeter. Suppose if you want to generate, suppose you know you don't have budget for a license tool for performance testing, but still you want to do performance testing with JMeter. Okay. You cannot bear, you know, the organization can't bear. One second, yes, I'm switching to the Wi Fi because it's very slow. Uh, mobile data is slow. Am I audible, guys? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So, uh, I did some free demo sessions on Blaze Matter. Please go through that. Okay. They are explained, you know, like uh, what are the limitations of J Matter and how Blaze Matter is useful in this scenario. Clear, guys? Okay. Please go through this. Please go through this session uh, where I gave Blaze Matter introduction. And there are like three demo sessions, three demo sessions. On Blaze Meter. One second, guys. So if you want to execute, you know, but from Blaze Meter also, we will be actually actually executing JMeter scripts only. Got it? When you are using Blaze Meter, we will be actually running JMeter scripts only. However, you know, why we are using Blaze Meter is if you want to execute cache with JMeter alone, you cannot go beyond 10,000 or 20,000 users. But if you want to execute, you know, like uh, thousands or lakhs of users, again, it is uh, around, I think it is two lakhs, I think. Blaze Matter supports, I think, two lakhs are uh, somewhere around that. You know, there are no instances that, you know, someone executed mm -hmm. test with uh, millions of users. However, you know, like uh, uh, if you still don't want to, if you don't have license for load runner, you can use Blaze Matter. And internally, you know, we run JMeter scripts only, right? Guys, those who are new to performance testing, please ignore this discussion. This will this may sound Greek and Latin for you. So please ignore this discussion. Those who are aware of Lodener and JMeter, so you know you have uh, an alternative for performance center. In Lodener, we have something called performance center, right? So similarly, in JMeter, we have something called Blaze Meter. Okay. We'll discuss, guys, we'll discuss more on this later on. New participants will get confused unnecessarily. 
Pavan, I have a question. So based on your experience, right? So what is the maximum number of uh, virtual users you worked on or like uh, you have some experience, like you have real time experience, right? So maximum limit or how many virtual users you worked on? Maximum Pavan? users that I tested is some 40,000. I remember if I remember it correctly, 40 or 50,000 with load and nothing. Okay. Uh, sir, yeah. sir. Yeah. With the single machine or you have used the different machine? No, multiple machines. We use multiple machines. Okay. Single so machine, for with single machine, it's not possible. Okay. So for sir, each machine, how much load you have given? 40,000 users. We used around eight machines. Okay. Eight to ten machines. I don't remember if I it exactly, but I think some it will be somewhere around eight to ten. You need eight eight to ten machines. If you want to execute like 40,000 or 50,000 user load test, 40,000 user load test, because you know, I think we cannot go beyond 5,000 users per machine. Again, and that was long back, I don't know, like recently, recently, you know, like, uh, because you know, the system configurations are uh, increasing uh, drastically, right? We have SSDs now, previously we used to have hard disks only, isn't it? Now we are having SSDs, right? Yeah, yeah correct. Okay. Yeah, and now these are the important load and load components which we already discussed. We use a controller analysis component and these are agent machines means nothing but load generator machines. The machines from which we run the scripts. <laughs> Those are called as agent machines or load generator machines. And this is your application under test. Just assume that you are testing Amazon application, right? So this is your, this is that tier, your, your application under test. Got it? And now this is the load testing process, load and load testing process. Guys, this is one of the important interview. Uh, do we have, you know, one second recording. So one of our, uh, you know, last batch student, uh, current batch, you know, not, not last batch. So the current batch, you know, he is attending JMET, I think now. So he attended one interview recently on uh, load runner. And this was the question asked. This is one of the questions asked. Can you explain the load runner, uh, load testing process in load runner? Okay. So how do we do that? We need to first plan the load test create the virtual user scripts, define the scenario. What is the scenario we already discussed just now? What is the scenario? It has been it means combine all the scripts. Combination of scripts is called a scenario, right? First, we need to do the plan, load test plan or we need to create a test plan document, right? And we need to create the virtual scripts, user virtual user scripts, and then combine the scripts to make it a scenario. We define the scenario run the scenario and analyze the test results. So these are the important steps in load runner load testing process. Okay. Please go through this theoretical definition. Otherwise, you know, we will come to, uh, once we complete scripting, we will again revisit this. Okay. Again, we will, we will see like the same, you know, some slides will be repeated in the performance, uh, in the execution slides also. Hold on. So we have, you know, one separate slide deck for uh, executions, test executions. So some, some of these slides will be repeated in that. Not all, but some of the slides, important slides. So we'll re, we will uh, you know, revisit those. You see here? So I'll explain this again one more time. Okay. Once we start, once we complete scripting and once we start the text executions, we will discuss this in detail. All right. And now, yes. And how do you identify the critical business process? We discussed about you know critical business process process for an ad banking application, e-commerce application, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, right. So how do you identify that? Or what are what is meant by critical business flows? Right. So identifying the critical business flows for any application is important as we can't do performance testing for the whole application. See, observe here, those who are from manual testing background, when you are doing manual testing, you will cover hundreds and thousands of test cases, isn't it? At least hundreds of test cases. We have some manual test engineers in this batch. Do we have Ishwari? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like around 400 to 500 test cases. Right. So when you are doing... the complete functionality. Correct. So when you are doing functional testing, you will have around hundreds of test cases. Right. Average number. Yes, you are funny. Right. Now we know when, however, when you are doing performance testing, we will not cover each and every business flow. We will not cover each and every test case we will cover only important business flows of the application, okay? Because of time limitations, cost limitations, and effort limitations, not really required also. Because 
all the business flows will not be having same number of users, right? See, for example, if you take an Amazon application, commerce application like Amazon, right? So there will be some important business flows like search for a product, placing an order, isn't it? Track order. These are important business flows, isn't it? So we, we'll, when you are doing performance, mean those are used by majority of the users. Most of the users does that does those business flows. And now only those business flows which are used by majority of the users need performance testing. Right? There may be some business flows which less number of users use it. They don't require performance testing there because very less number of users use that. Isn't it? So what we what do we consider for performance testing? Business flows on which high number of users are expected to work simultaneously. Business flows on which high number of users are expected to work simultaneously. And critical business flows like login, register, checkout, and business flows in which data volume is high. For example, if you are generating an account statement in an ad banking application, it will involve a lot of records. It will fetch a lot of records from the database, isn't it? So they also require you know, performance testing. Business flows in which data volume is high means number of records processed as displayed, like a report generation or an account statement generation, etc. Okay. And business flows having high visibility. This is another important thing, guys. So there will be some dashboard pages seen by CEO and important stakeholders, isn't it? See, apart from the critical business flows, which are having more number of users, there will be some dashboard pages. What is meant by dashboard pages? Suppose Amazon CEO want to see how much was their sales in the past one month or how much was their sales in the past, you know, like one week, or they want to see how many mobiles they sold, how much business they made on mobiles. Okay. How much, you know, how much business they made on some other category. Okay. So stakeholders and, uh, you know, stakeholders will be hardly 10 or 20 or 30 or 40. Stakeholders means nothing but management from someone from the management. Okay. There will be only less number of users, but still the dashboard pages visited by them are important ones. Yes or no? Because they are the management. They are from the management of the company. Isn't it? So we will also consider those business flows which are having high visibility. Clear this? So based on that, you know, we will consider the critical business flows. We'll, we'll see what are the business flows that require performance testing. Clear guys? And I'll stop it here for today, guys. So tomorrow we'll start scripting for sure. Okay. We'll start, you know, like, uh, meanwhile, today we'll complete the installation also. We'll try to complete the load owner installation as well today. I'll stop it here for today. We'll continue tomorrow, guys. Any queries uh, before we close the session? Sir, Jayshri, I have a question on the architecture, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So how do we decide uh, these many uh, machines we need and uh, for uh, these many users, we want only these many machines? How do we, how, how does yeah, that happen? Good question. We'll discuss that. We'll discuss that once we complete scripting, we'll discuss that. Okay. Yeah, don't forget, sir. <laughs> That is important concept, okay? Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. That's sir. very important concept. Okay, we will discuss that. All right, then I'm passing recording this. So today is the last session for uh, Lodaner. So from tomorrow we are going to start scripting, and I think I already gave one uh, scripting demo last week. Last week, right? So also we have some demo sessions on my YouTube channel as well on scripting part, exclusively on scripting. So please go through that. Today is the last demo session, free demo session. And from tomorrow onwards, you know, if someone want to continue, like you need to, uh, you know, enroll for the training and pay the, you know, fees to confirm your journey. All right. Any other queries, guys? Hey, hi, others. We have, I think we have a new joinee called others. And Chandra. Chandra KR. Who is this, sir? Hey Chandra, I see someone joined with Display Name as Chandra. So others I know. Uh, we had Hi, sir. In WhatsApp. Chandra. Yeah, Chandra, who is this? Uh, can you please ping me on my WhatsApp number? Uh, Here is my WhatsApp. Okay. Okay. Any other new joinees? I saw Rohini also joined, but she got disconnected.
and i see someone joined with display name as kiran who is this kiran yeah hi sir uh, this is kiran uh, i already uh, one demo session attended for jmeter uh, okay can you please tell me on whatsapp once kiran yeah sure sir chandra chandra also yeah definitely okay and uh, for your information guys like uh, we are running one uh, let me uh, in recording is in progress right yeah so we are running one evening batch for jmeter as well the timings of that batch are 7 to 8 pm okay so tomorrow i'll be starting load runner that is 10th jan so scripting will be you know like uh, we will be having scripting sessions for at least one month on five different applications guys five different applications actually i know if we have enough number of classroom participants i thought of having a fast track batch now also you know if we have more classroom participants we'll have a fast track batch okay so two hours to three hours per day you can have two to three hours per day batch also but you know it should be a classroom batch okay online you know like it's difficult to like uh, stay focused for that much time okay so we'll spend the next one month from tomorrow onwards jan 10th to feb 10th approximately first week of feb till end of the till end of first week of feb we'll be having scripting sessions on five to six different applications five to six different applications guys okay not just web tools or jpet store so i will cover enterprise java applications i want to cover enterprise java applications like this okay i'll show you some applications which i am going to cover for scripting so this is one real time and uh, five demo applications and one real time application demo applications most of the people knows so this is one real time application that i want to cover in this scripting in the, as part of this training with loadana got it okay so this is one real time application in production environment which we can do scripting we can create an account and we can do scripting on this okay and so you know this is how your real time projects will be and many people are you know many people are still skeptical that you know uh, will the real time applications will be same as you know if we learn performance testing can we do like can we survive or you know is it enough to keep 3 years experience or is it enough if, to manage right so you need not have any doubt guys because we already have 400 proven stories 400 proven students like who cracked interview on their own and who who survived already who some of them completed 3 years also two years of their career three years of their career i have around 40 people in on site right who are trained by me and who are working now in malaysia singapore us and australia we have one guy from rohit who was working in australia now so recently he came to india and ping he ping me but he want to meet me okay i forgot it actually right so that guy was working in australia now he was trained in 2021 and he got the job in 2021 and uh, luckily he got an on site opportunity immediately before one year in the first one year itself he was working for a company called planet testing you might have heard that company right qualification i remember that picture right so we are already having 400 plus proven stories guys okay so who are working after the training so without any job support for your information okay so this guy this guy you know was uh, this guy 2021 i said right so he was trained in 2021 and uh, he got a job in planet testing uh, he was working for planet testing in australia and uh, recently like he came to uh, last week i think he came to india and ping me that he he want to meet me once while uh, he was in hyderabad okay so we have you know 400 plus not just 10 or 20 we have four, we are having 400 plus success stories and guys please you know uh, please follow my instagram page so i am sharing some job openings here today i am going to share around four to five job openings on my instagram page okay so you can see previously also i shared some openings continuously i will be sharing some openings on my instagram page okay and some success stories like this all right uh, so chandrasekhar this was one uh, success story Uh, this guy was for, from civil background he used to work in reliance jio 
as a site supervisor and he he took training and he got into it and uh, recently he completed two years yeah. also. okay and you know i'll show you some openings that i'm sharing and some free trainings as well you know you can see yeah. here i did i recorded a few sessions on mongodb performance testing and uh, this was available on my youtube mm -hmm. channel whenever i am doing those kind of things so i am uploading to my instagram i am sharing on my instagram page link to those as well and uh, referral openings as well whenever we have some referral openings we are sharing that on my instagram page okay let me show you a few more openings mm -hmm. and some success stories right these are some recent these are some recent uh, success stories okay samira uh, she got you know she got into uh, a service based company and uh, got you know cleared a client interview for a banking client abu dhabi banking client she was into manual testing previously and uh, she took training and switched to performance previously she, she did some performance testing but you know not at a full time performance testing so again she attended training on both loadner and jmeter tools and uh, she got joined with a very good you know she got a career break during that break she joined training and she got a very good package and very good company as well this is one more success story uh, his name his name is narendra one more success story here right so and there are this is one more success story so this belongs to shravan uh, shravan kumar ready from nellore sir the other day you said you wanted to attend some interview in hyderabad how did it go sir no, I, i did not attend that actually so uh, actually in... before on friday i took a back to back session so i really got vexed up so i could not attend that uh, saturday and friday and these are some openings which are which we are sharing us some referral openings these are some referral op openings which i got through our colleagues okay ex colleagues and uh, now friends got it so please follow this instagram page please. status right so last week you know uh, still it is going on i am doing swot analysis of our previous batches and the enquiries i received in the past 3 months and uh, i think you know i updated it today morning in my status whatsapp status so what is swot analysis swot analysis means uh, strengths weakness opportunities and threats okay so we are doing swot analysis of our previous batch students as well as the enquiries that we received separately as well as enquiries we uh, we have been receiving right and uh, happy to inform that you know like 90% of the students who met me personally joined the training okay so i have you know usually when they meet me i get them fill the enquiry form and i i took all that data and i when i analyzed that 90% of them joined the training those who are not meeting i mean those who are looking for online training and those who did not meet me personally no we have only 50% of them enrolled for training only 50% but those who met me personally like 90% of them enrolled for the training already paid fees okay and in the same way we are analyzing our you know previous batch students performance why you know why they failed in hexaver interview okay we took it as a challenge and we are trying to address those challenges right one challenge is most of them are housewives and some of them are active in uh, instagram reels and all okay that is a surprising okay. thing that i found ha uh, influencer social media, they are trying to you know make themselves as social media influencers okay i am not sure what are their goals actually actual goals but uh, that is a hard fact that they are most active on instagram so recently i started using instagram very recently then i got to know that our students are most active on instagram reels and all those okay all right anyways so so that's why we decided like from from the, from the next class uh, placement assistance training you know i will start a new batch only once i get you know uh, like more of more boys than girls okay are than housewives sir <laughs> yeah current batch is uh, current batch is we have more boys than girl, housewives and girls yes yeah because you know in most of the cases for them it is not mandatory it's not 100% mandatory to get a job right that is one reason right that is a known reason and most of them who attended last placement batch was housewives anyways so i'm not saying that you know everyone will be like that case okay 
so i'm not generalizing that i don't want to generalize that but so this is based on facts and figures anyways anyway still you know we got three placement in december and uh, three guys uh, are waiting for hr discussion this month last month we got three placements that mean i mean i mean to say that you know three of our students got play, placement conf or confirmation and this month we are you know already like we are still in the first week right only one week completed in this month working week i mean to say right so we got like three candidates selected and you know like uh, they are waiting for hr discussion okay that is the good news we are targeting five placements this month already three people are close to the target with this you know i'll stop it here here for today we'll continue tomorrow guys